All right, so we already finished number five. Let's go on to number six. Number six is a recursive sequence where you have to use the first term as 17. So if your first term is 17, the next term in the sequence, a sub 2, would come from 2 times, now this n minus 1, it means the term that came before it, which would be a sub 1. So that would be 2 times the 17 that I had gotten, plus 5. So if I do that, I get 39. So that is now my second term. Now I want my third term. And again, recursive means I am recycling. I am now going to take 3 minus 1, or a sub 2, which is 39. I'm going to double that. I'm going to add 5 to that. And I am going to get 83. Finally, they want the fourth term. So a sub 4. Again, we're going to recycle. It's a recursive. I'm going to put the 83 in always use the number that came before in the sequence and then I'm going to add 5 on to that and my answer for the fourth term would be 171. So hopefully now you are no longer getting all stressed out over the subscripts. Remember a subscript just tells you where it is that you're going to look for something. Number 7 is another recursive pattern. They tell you your first term is one-tenth and again the next term in the pattern is going to come from four times that one-tenth plus six. That is going to generate a value of 6.4. Now I'm going to say four times 6.4 and then I'm going to add 6 to that and that's going to generate a value of 31.6 then I will say 4 times the 31.6 plus 6 final number in this sequence that they asked for is 132.4 Next, sigma notation. Now, before I can write this in sigma notation, I have to first see, is there a pattern involved? Well, if I look at 17 to 23, I can see that I am increasing by 6. Now, 23 to 29 is also an increase of 6. 29 to 35, same increase, which means my common difference is 6, and that makes this an arithmetic sequence. So if I'm going to use an arithmetic sequence, I have to remember this is the formula that I need to memorize. a sub n comes from a sub 1 plus the number of terms n minus 1 times that common difference. Now, to write in sigma notation means I could find any number of terms. So, therefore, I'm not going to use this, and I'm going to keep the n. But I, what I will put into this pattern is my 17. Uh, again, I'm go I don't know I, how many terms I'm going to use. I can use as many terms as I wish. So, I am now going to fill in my common difference of d. If I clean this up, I have 17 and again my common difference of D is 6, so I should have wrote 6 there, let me fix that. So I have 17 plus 6D, 6 6N, <laughs> minus 6. Alright, one of these days I'll speak right. So 6N plus 11 is the overall pattern of what's going on to make this series. So in sigma notation I have sigma I have one term up to four terms, so n is going from one to four, and my pattern is 6n plus 11. 
Now number 9, they gave this to me in sigma notation. Now number 9 can be a real crazy problem if I don't use my formulas. Now what I'm talking about is this. Let's say I don't want to use the formulas because you guys are always telling me how much you hate the formulas because, you know, they're a pain and you'd rather write it out. All right, I'm going to write this one out and I'm going to show you why I'm telling you the formula is the better way to go. So if I start at 5 and I have to go to 20, my first term looks like this. 6 times 5 plus 2 and then I got to add that to my next term which would be 6 times 6 plus 2 then I have to add that to the next term, which would be 6 times 7 plus 2. And then I have to find 6 times 8 plus 2. And I got to do this all the way up to 20. That is going to take me forever. I'd rather not do that. I could do that, but I'd rather not. If that's the way you want to do it, have fun. I'm going to go back to the formulas. And the first formula I'm going to use is to see if there's a common difference. So I am going to work out the first couple of problems. So this makes 32. This next one makes 38. This next one makes 44. Already, I hope you're seeing that there is a common difference of 6 between each of these terms. And with the common difference of 6, and with that formula that I'm supposed to know that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference, I can actually find the, f the 20th term if I start at 5. So let's find a sub 20. a sub 20 is going to come from the first term I'm starting with, which happens to be a sub 5, and that's 32. Now the only thing I have to do here is I have to be very mindful that I'm not using 20 terms. I didn't use terms 1, 2, 3, and 4. I started at 5, so I'm using only 16 terms. Again, it's not 5 to 20, 15. It's saying I used 5 up to 20. I did not use term 1, term 2, term 3, or term 4. So 20 take away 4, I'm using 16 terms. Minus 1, and I'm going to multiply that by my common difference of 6. And so doing this, I am going to find out that my final term is 32 plus 15 times 6, which is 90. And that makes my 20th term 122. Now that I know that my first term in this sequence is 32, and I um, which is actually the fifth term, <laughs> and I know that the final term is 122, now I can take the formula for the sum of an arithmetic sequence and that formula looks like this. The sum of an arithmetic sequence is n times a sub 1 plus a sub n and it's on the front page of your packet so this you know writing with the mouse is a little sloppy divide it by 2. And when I do that, and I again knew that I had 16 terms, so that was pretty important that I ca counted correctly at the beginning. 16, and I have 32 plus 122. And I divide this now in half. Type that in on my calculator. And my sum will be 1,232. So there you have it. So number 9, 1,232. Number 10, another arithmetic sequence. 
This one has a second term of 6 and a sixth term of 30. So again, I'm going to have to use this formula that you need to memorize. And I'm going to just plug in. I have 30 is equal to 6 plus. Now here I'm going from the second term to the sixth term. So if I think about it, I don't know the first term. I have the second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, sixth term. So I am using 5. So my n now is going to be 5 minus 1, and I'm going to solve for my common difference. So if 30 is equal to 6 plus 4d, and I subtract 6 from both sides, so now I have 24 is equal to 4d, okay, just by chance, my common difference again is going to be 6. And that's all they wanted me to find, but if I want to just make sure that I'm right, I can always, wow, that's pretty sloppy, I can always come over and say, well, 6 minus 6, this would have been 0, this would have been 12, add 6 more to 18, add 6 more to 24, add 6 more, I get to 30, I know I'm right. So you can always check yourself. Number 11, now there's two ar arithmetic means that are going to be between 18 and 20, excuse me, 18 and 30. We're still using this formula. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So I have 30. I have 18 plus I have 4 minus 1 times my common difference, which I don't know what that is. And I don't know why I'm writing so sloppy now. I think I'm getting tired. So 30 is equal to 18 plus 3d minus 18 from both sides, you get 12 is equal to 3d. And that now makes my common difference equal to 4. With the common difference of 4, this number here would be 22. This number here would be 26. And then I do land at 30. Now a geometric sequence has a different formula that I need to know. The geometric sequence a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times the common ratio, which is r, to the n minus 1 power. So my first term is 4. Let's plug that in. I don't know my r, but I do know that I'm using 5 terms, So, because they told me that right here. So now that would be 5 minus 1 up as my exponent, and then I have the 324 down here. If I divide both sides by 4, I find out that I have 81 equals r to the fourth power. So now if I want to cancel this, I'll use the reciprocal, 1 fourth. And on my calculator, if I take 81 to the 1 fourth power, I'm going to get my common ratio is equal to 3. Now if my common ratio is 3 and I start at 4, I'm going to say 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. 36 times 3, 108. And then finally, 108 times 3, 324. Now, I'm almost out of time. So the last one is very similar to the first one. I will tell you that you should get a common ratio of 1 half. And if you do that, you will get your terms.